All right, so uh, today we'll talk about Wrestle Kingdom 12. I've been putting this video. Been, I finished Wrestle Kingdom two weeks ago. Been putting this video off for a little bit, but figured let's get it out the way now. It was a pretty, really good show. Ending made zero sense. Like the result of the in, the main event made zero sense, but we'll get into that towards the end. So, been busy with some things, and but here I am, and we're about to get this Wrestle Kingdom 12 video out the way. So, Wrestle Kingdom 12, you had this pre show rumble, not really gonna go over it. All I'll tell you is Masahiro Kakihara, he won. Not really quite aware of him, not familiar with him, but. At some point, whenever I'm going through New Japan's history, I'm in the 80s. So, just, I'm into the 80s, so, whenever I scroll through, like, probably like in the 90s or something like that, 2000s, I'll be more familiar with him. But, the main card, you had the Young Bucks and the Rapunky 3K for the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Tag Titles. Yeah, you had cool spots in there. He had a uh, Young Bucks. They had some. He had a few super kicks every now and then. For Punky 3K, they did some. He did a few planches and all that. He had one spot where I remember one spot where Young Bucks power bombed Rocky Romero on the stage since he was with for Punky 3K. Then uh, you had an. You had another spot where uh, there was another spot that stood out where. You had uh, Matt Jackson take one of the Rapunga 3K guys, put him in a sharpshooter, or, and then one of Rapunga 3K put Nick Jackson in a sharpshooter, and they were kind of like punching each other a little bit while they're putting the other's opponent in a, the other's tag partner in the sharpshooter. And another one spot where you had, uh, they were kicking each other's partners in the back. You had an indie taker on the outside. Side. So you had some good spots. And then the match ended where they did the they did the Meltzer driver and then followed by a sharpshooter for the submission and the Young Bucks become your seven time IWGP junior heavyweight tag team champions. Uh, it's a pretty good match to start the show. But the Young Bucks winning a seventh time, I really don't get that. I don't really, like, how many times are the Young Bucks going to win the damn titles? Seriously. For Christ's sake, have some damn variety. Never understood that. It's like, they need, the, the, junior heavy, the junior heavyweight division really needs some more people. More specifically for the tag, for the tag team division there. In there so I hope that they get some more people because it's really getting tiresome this fucking hot potato bullshit where young bucks win it and then about a month or two they drop it to the next guy no real meaningful title reigns I just they they need to find some tag teams real quick next up you got a uh, you had this never open weight six man tag match where you had Chaos, Suzuki Goon, Bullet Club, Michael Logan and War Machine, Togi Makabe, and then Togi Makabe, Juice Robinson, and Ryusuke Taguchi. You had uh, Suzuki Goon, Zack Sabre Jr., Tai Chi, and I believe it's Zuka. Yeah, Zuka. They were starting things off, and then they started off with, uh, I believe, uh, Elgin and War Machine. Yeah, it was Elgin and War Machine. They hit the usual spots. And he had Zack Sabre Jr. make a row tap out, or did he choke him out? I don't know. I can't remember which. Either way, it kind of had to call bullshit. I mean, Sabre, like, row is way bigger than him. Like, 
Saber dominating role. I kind of had to call bullshit on that, but I digress. Then you had uh, Chaos, which which represents Chaos. You had Tomohiro Ishii, Toriano's bum ass, and then Shrimp Arata since Rapungi Bias had split up. And Rocky's managing Rapungi through K. They ended up getting a victory. They ended up doing some. Yano's doing his usual dirty shit. And uh, they ended up getting the pin on uh, Suzuki Goon, which. And they got them out of there. Then they had to face Bullet Club, Tama Tonga, Bad Luck Fale, Tonga Raw. So. They had their spots. Ishii going at it with uh, Fale. Tama Tonga doing his stuff, everybody doing their thing. They got. Chaos was able to get them out of there, and then you had Makabe, Robinson, and Taguchi being the last team they had to face. Loved Makabe stuff. Ishii's headbutts. Clothesline, Makabe's power slam. You had Juice do his cannonball in the corner. You had Taguchi. Yeah, at one point you had Taguchi where he was run, running traffic where you have we have uh, Makabe and Juice taking turns clotheslining Yano in the corner and then fucking Makabe does his ass bump not a Makabe but Taguchi does his ass bump and then he tries and he does this Shinsuke Nakamura pose which enough of this shit but he goes to do that fucking ass tackle to Yano, but Yano ducks, gets the schoolboy, gets the roll up for the three count, and uh, Chaos wins the Never Open Weight Six Man Tag Titles. It, it was fairly solid. It was a decent match. Nothing to write home about. It's not one where you can go back and watch. But it, it's still a solid match. Then you had Kota Ibushi versus Cody Rhodes. This was, this was a good match. This, this is where the show started to pick up. And uh, you had... Uh, hey, you had uh, Cody and Ibushi. They were feeling each other out. And then... Uh, eventually, Ibushi got, Kota Ibushi got the upper hand. Sent Cody outside the ring. Went for a plancha and uh, he hits the plancha on Cody and Brandy Rhodes gets caught up in it. But then she, it was a ruse where Ibushi tries to carry her and then Cody attacks her from behind. And then Brandy smirking, like smiling. I mean, she looked fine as hell. Like she was, she was dressed up in gold, I believe. Like she looked fine as hell as usual. Cody doing his thing as an old school heel. <laughs> Where he was working over, uh, he appeared to be working over Ko Kotobushi's neck throughout the match. Does a neck breaker on the apron. A few points. He had Ibushi fighting through. He did a front flip dive. Like he, he did his usual thing where he does the. Where he does a kick into the moon salt. Salt and uh, Cody, he tried to do beautiful. He hit the beautiful disaster kick at one point. I like that, and I also like the uh, Kota Bushi's golden star power bomb, which he get, which was used to get get him the win. Really good match between these two. It was like the first time they had wrestled, and it was like a special match that they had been setting up. And this, yeah, because this is right around the time when Cody was the ROH World Title. Then he dropped it to Dalton Castle at Final Battle, which is when when I when I found that out. That's when I stopped watching ROH, stopped fucking with ROH. But uh, I digress. Really good match. I would I like to see these two have a few more matches in the future. And then you had Sonata and Evil of Los Ingobernables de Japón. Taking on Killer Elite Squad for the IWGP Heavyweight Tag Team Championships. This is another really good match. Where you start off where uh, 
Killer Elite Squad ended up hitting their finisher on Evil, and he was dazed. It looked like he might have had a concussion. The way he was selling, the way he was selling the finisher, and Sonata was taking. He was getting worked over for the most part throughout most of the match, and uh, really good. Killer Elite Squad getting their stuff in. Where they had like a bear hug clothesline combo. Yeah, Los Ingobernables where he had uh, Evil doing his discus clothesline in the corner. When he goes to charge his opponent. I think it was Lance Archer or was it Davey Boy Smith Jr. Can't remember. But uh, he took the clothesline. Evil also hit an STO on both of them. He was able to hit STOs on both the guys. Sonata, he was putting the skull in a few point on, was it Davy Boy or was it Lance Archer? Can't remember which. Then, uh, fucking, and then, uh, I can't remember what combination. Can't remember the tag team move that Evil and Sonata hit. They got it for two count and then Sonata hit the moonsault for the three. And uh, Sonata and Evil became your new tag champs. Thought that was a really good match as well. Really good. I like the direction that the IWGP Heavyweight Tag Division is going. Hopefully they have more. So you got Gorillas of Destiny there. You have uh, Sonata and Evil. You got Killer Elite Squad. War Machine. They got a pretty good heavyweight tag division now. So now we can have some good matches. You got pretty good matches. And you won't have worthless title reigns. Really looking forward to seeing what's going to happen next in the future. I'm going to get... So now, after this, we got a... Uh... Damn, I need to move my hand off the damn camera. So then we have uh, the IWGP Never Open Weight Championship match. Haruki Goto versus Minoru Suzuki. Where it's a loser has to shave their hair match. Really good match. You don't have interference from... Uh, what's it called? You don't really have uh, interference from... Uh, Suzuki Goon, although they tried to interfere towards the end. Although, this is a really hard-hitting match. Where uh, Suzuki and Goto were just beating the shit out of each other. Because Suzuki would often slap the fuck out of Goto. And then he would also give him some sick-ass forearms. Goto hit his usual shit. Like that spinning back kick in the corner. Following up with the Saido suplex. He also he also would hit a, and in the end he ended up hitting a Suzuki with he hit him with like multiple GTRs. Where the first one was a reverse GTR, then a second. Shit was fucking awesome, and Goto ended up uh, regaining the Never Open Weight Championship, and Suzuki lost the match and Goto pulled up the chairs like hey sit down and I'll grab the clippers I mean Suzuki's like eh fuck out of here throws the chair grabs the chair sits down grabs the clippers and he shaves his own head just did it like a badass so that's just fucking cool he's like yeah fuck you I'm shaving my own hair so and that was a really good match. Not quite as good as like the previous matches. Previous Never Work Point Championship matches. Like last year, Wrestle Kingdom 11. You had uh, Goto and uh, Shibata. They were beating the fuck out of each other. But the best one I'd have to say is Shibata and Ishii. I mean, these niggas were going at it. <laughs> like that shit was so hilarious how they were just beating the shit out of each other and they were just so serious about it too.
So, uh, then, yeah, I'm going to catch up with New Japan. I'm going to watch uh, Best of the Super Juniors today. So, Because it's on today. I don't know how far behind I am. I hope it's just day one, because if it is, then I can just watch it. If not, then I got a lot of work to do. But anyway, you got the Fatal 4-Way for the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship. You have Will Ospreay, Marty Skrull, the champion, Kushida, and Hiromu Takahashi. This was a really good match. These guys were going all out. Where you had a... Uh, Scroll was ducking everyone at the beginning. Where you had uh, Kushida and uh, Osprey Trick going back and forth with each other. Takahashi got involved a little bit. Had cool spots. Osprey with his usual Sasuke special. Marty Scroll had through through a few suplexes. He also he was also hitting motherfuckers with the um, umbrella. Hiromu Takahashi, he did his senton on the outside. Kushida, I don't know if Kushida tried to do an outside dive, but uh, Marty Scroll cut him off. Or is it Will Osprey? Can't remember. Osprey had a nice Spanish fly, and I remember he had uh, Osprey doing super kicks to. Every, yeah, these guys were hitting super kicks on each other. Osprey using the usual super kick where you'd like tuck your head in if you're in the corner. Osprey would tuck your head in and do a super kick. At one point, there was one moment that's kind of cringeworthy to me where uh, Marty Squirrel, Squirrel fucking grabbed some duct tape and he was taping Hiromu's wrist onto the guardrail. That was really cringeworthy because this shit reminds me of... Uh, that last man standing match between John Cena and Batista where fucking Cena duct taped Batista's feet so he couldn't get up and it was around the ring post fuck that fucking bullshit get bad memories of that every time I see duct tape and no matter where, whether it be WWE, New Japan Impact, whatever I really don't like that but uh, Osprey was able to hit the Oz Cutter on uh, Marty Scroll and uh, become the IW, the new IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champion. Really good match. Not as good as the previous one. Well, actually, I take that back. It's better than Wrestle Kingdom Nine. I could you could I could say it's on par with Ten. Well, actually, no. I'd have to put it below 10 and 11 because 11 was better where you had Roman Takahashi and uh, Kushida. That was fucking amazing. But this one, a step, a step down from that. Still a really good match to check out. Then you had the IWGP Intercontinental Championship. Hiromi. <laughs> what the fuck? Why did I say Hiromi? Steinerline. <laughs> Hiroshi Tanahashi and... Uh, Jay White, Switchblade. This was a. This was. It, compared to its previous matches, this was. This was a lackluster match. It wasn't a bad match, but compared to the previous ones, I thought they could have did. Could have been much better. You had Jay White working over the leg of Tanahashi throughout the match. Tanahashi fighting through the pain. Where, you know, Jay White was being a heel, but he, I don't think he's comfortable in that heel role yet. Then again, they ruin it later on when he becomes fucking part of chaos, which he would have been better off as home man. Or if you're going to put him in a faction, either put him in Suzuki Goon or Los Ingobernables de Apon. One of those. So, they should have put him in one of those factions. But, uh, anyway, it was a good match. Tanahashi does the usual forms in the corner. 
His sling blades were good. Dragon screw leg whip was nice. The dragon screw neck breaker on the apron. I think he did it on the apron. Did one on the apron. He was able to do a high fly flow on the outside. And after back to back high fly flows, Tanahashi was able to retain the championship. Good. It was good, but disappointing. Then we get to the co main event. A no disqualification match for the IWGP United States Heavy United States Championship. Kenny Omega being the champion, defending against Chris Jericho. You know how I feel about Omega. Jericho's a bitch too. The way they dress. And Jericho kissing ass for the E. But these two put on a hell of a match. I can't deny that. The guys were beating the shit at each other. Omega bladed at one point. And, uh, yeah, like these guys left it all out there. Omega's Topic on Hilo was nice. He had Jericho's Lion Salt. That was dope. They were smashing each other with chairs. He had cool table spots. Jericho tried to powerbomb Omega through a table, but Omega was fighting it, so Jericho ended up power bombing him on the floor on the outside he threw Jericho into the crowd and Jericho threw Omega into the crowd but they were fighting all over it was a really good brawl Omega was spamming V triggers and uh, and Omega spamming V triggers Young Bucks were at ringside I remember before the match, they kind of had a bit of a fight. And Jericho was attacking him. And then he had the Young Lions and stuff separate him. Because he had the Young Bucks at ringside, but they didn't interfere. Then after a few V-triggers and stuff, Omega hits the one Wing Angel to retain. Retain the title. Really good match. This was uh, the best... Like, this was really good. This had been the best match up to that point. Omega retained the title, and then eventually he ended up dropping it to Jay White. So, in hindsight, Jay White losing the title really didn't do that bad because he ended up taking it off Omega. And Omega ended up putting him over clean. So, with that, we're going to get into uh, the main event. IWGP Heavyweight Championship match The Rainmaker Kazuchika Okada Defending against Tetsuya Naito Five star match The wrong guy won But uh, I really liked uh, The usual spots like Naito With the snapmare into the drop kick Snapmare followed by a drop Sitting drop kick I like when Naito went to charge Okada in the corner and Okada sits him on the turnbuckle and does the drop kicks him to the outside. I enjoyed Okada. Kind of uh, hitting his big boot on the outside. Trying to go for a dive but Naito was able to get him. Get out the way. Naito working on the neck of Okada at part of the match. Hitting a neck breaker a few points. Hit the hitting. I liked his sling drop. I like his uh, slingshot drop kick in the corner. Okada's tombstone was nice. His heavy rain was dope. DDT was good. Fought into the kip up. Had a good uppercut. I really liked his forearms. Because Okada, his forearms were connecting better, man. When they made contact, they sounded better. And this is like the, this is like to me, like this is the best match Okada's had. Where, when you look at his forearms, in terms of connect, in terms of hearing like how the sound of his, the sound his forearms are making when, when they make contact, really good. Naito had good forearms. His Gloria, I liked when he hit Gloria. Naito hit Destino few times 
Okada's Rainmaker was good as usual. And uh, Naoto tried Destino, but Okada was able to counter a few times. And uh, he hits the Rainmaker about three times, and he gets the win. And Naito, he's crying. And the post-match, it's reminiscent of the end of Wrestle Kingdom 9 when Tanahashi beat Okada. And you see Okada crying. And then Tanahashi's talking shit like, you'll never be the man, bro. That was a good match, but nah, nigga. I'm not finished being the man. So sit your ass down. And it kind of had that similar vibe to it. With Okada and Naito. So. Over. Yeah. And. I don't understand what Ghetto has against Naito. I don't get it. It was Naito's time. He was clearly ready. Like the crowd was white hot. But for whatever reason. You fucking have Okada win. Like Okada is one of my favorite wrestlers. I like Okada, but goddamn, this is fucking ridiculous. Like, the, it's not gonna hurt the motherfucker to lose clean to Naito. Like, what the fuck is so hard? Like, seriously, get rid of Gato. He fucking sucks his Booker. Just have fucking get somebody that's a good Booker. That knows what the fuck they're doing. Like, it was Naito's time to shine. And they fucked him over again. I'm, I'm glad that Zack Sabre Jr. didn't beat Okada at Dontaku. But Omega's gonna challenge for the title at Dominion. So we gotta. Omega's gonna get a fucking title ring before Naito could get his true title ring. Like, Naito got a title ring, but I'm not even gonna count that title ring. That title ring was fucking shit. That title ring was fucking straight up bullshit. Where it was only like. He only got it and he only. Was able to defend it against Ishii one match. And when he won the title, they made him look like a bitch winning the title. <sighs> this is straight up bullshit, man. But over but overall, I gotta give this match. I got I gotta get this show. It was great wrestling though. So I would say eight and a half, nine out of ten. So that is it for Wrestle Kingdom 12. And uh, this weekend, I'm going to see uh, how far behind I am on Best of the Super Juniors. And I'm going to give that a look. Hopefully I'm not too far behind. But if I am, I'm going to work to catch up. So hopefully it's only started like one day. If not, man, I can put in a lot of work and just watch them and then just watch the tournaments. Because it's usually about 12 nights. What is it, like 12 to 15 nights or something like that? So I should be able to get it in, so that's so i uh, hope hope you guys enjoyed this video been a while so i was rusty if i missed if i was off on some spots i apologize but figure i'd just get this out the way right now here and now so hope you guys are having a good weekend and i'll see y'all later